Random J Productions welcomes you to the Papyrus Motorsports Park in Walton, Massachusetts for the final race in this year's Triple Winner Challenge. This is the Massachusetts Classic. To wrap up our winter fun, 28 of the world's best drivers are all lined up at this fast and unique road course that's sure to produce plenty of action here today. In case you're new here, let's once again take a look at the format for this year's Triple Winner Challenge. First off, all the cars on track here today were all identically prepared for one another, in addition to each car having standardized paint schemes. Second, the manufacturer of this year's challenge was determined by the winner of the Palm Summer League Championship last year. So in this case, PSL champion Brendan Beal, who drove a Dodge, results in every car in today's field being an all-Dodge field. And as for the Triple Winner Challenge itself, if a driver is able to win two out of the three races, they will receive a one-time reserve good for this year's Palm Summer League season. So in the case of here today, if Madhouse winner Alex Deval or M&M's Classic winner Matthew Burnett win, they will get the reserve for the PSL. But if another driver wins today, no one will get the reserve. In addition as well, each of the 28 drivers are separated into four different alliances. Ruby, Diamond, Silver, and Gold, with each alliance having seven drivers each. The average finishes of each alliance will also be shown at the end of this race for good measure. And lastly, to clarify once again, this is not a series, as driver points nor a championship will be rewarded. But before we get started here today, let's first take a look at our starting lineup and pre-race ceremonies for the last time here this winter. So on the pole is the 61 of Junior Fours making his second straight front row start, while next to him Jason Albert 84 is trying to salvage of what's been a disastrous Triple Winner Challenge for him so far. Row 2, Keyshawn Richardson in the 46 of Mopar. We got an all diamond row number three of Brandon Crowders in the 20 and the 53 of Random J. Row four, Lipsy in the eight car and Madison Chase in the 06 trying to keep up her very consistent performance here in the Triple Winner Challenge. We got an all silver row number five with Nathan Stapleton who's won at this track before. Row next to him was the 21 of Roberto Crown. Meanwhile, row number six is an all gold row of the 10 of Patrick Miller and the 45 of Ross McTrain. Row 7, Joe T in the 9 car, and Cowan Baker in the 28. Row 8, we've got two former Golf Summer Series champions, Ryan Wilson in the 48, and Hodum in the 88. Row 9, Carol Bros and longtime row fan teammate, Brad Ream in the 16. Row 10, Jordan Stout in the 11, and the 95 and Nathan Orman. We've got an all Ruby row number 11 of Alex Bowen in the 1 car, and PSL champion, Brendan Beal. Likewise, row number 12 is also an all ruby row of Jose Angel Gutierrez in the 25 and the 91 of Owen Miles. Row 13, Kyle Sustra in the 19 and Eminem's classic winner, Matthew Burnett. And finally, row number 14, Nick Sand the 40 and Madhouse classic winner, Alex Santavallo. And just as a reminder, if either Santavallo or Burnett win here today, they will win the challenge and get the reserve for the PSL. But with both drivers starting rather deep in the field here today, both drivers will have their work cut out for him here today. And now it is time for a period ceremony starting with our national anthem. And now for the final time here in the first ever Triple Winner Challenge for this year, it is time for the most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines!
Let's briefly take a look at the track info here for today's race. So we're going to go 16 laps on this massive 3.7 mile long road course consisting of 7 turns. And as for the weather here today, it's a very cool 33 degrees Fahrenheit with cloudy skies with 9 mile per inch towards the west. And finally, as for the past winners here in Papyrus, Aiden Thomas last won the Massachusetts Classic in 2022, when Nathan Stapleton won the Golf Summer Series race that also took place in 2022. But now, with all of that finally out of the way, the pace car heads down pit road as the sold-out crowd here at Papyrus is ready to close off the Triple Owner Challenge here on this cloudy MLK day. Here we go. Green flag is out here in the Massachusetts Classic. So under the inside, got a really good start through turns one and two, but as Kikisha Urchin tries to move up, he's going to be side by side Brittany Carruthers for second place. And you see we're already three wide going down the hill, Rolpar being forced to the middle, Lipsy on the inside. Down the steep hill into turns three and four. Forbes now has a sizable gap over both Carruthers and Richardson, while Mopar is able to break free away from the three wide. As he's going to tuck in the four, but other drivers are still three to four wide towards the middle and back of the pack. Going into turn up the hill into turn number five, there's a very tricky corner to stay off the wall, and you see Albert and Random briefly hitting the wall there, as both the drivers are going to lose some ground here. Off of five and now down this back straightaway where it provides a really good opportunity for these drivers to gain ground on one another as you go into turn six and seven. And Richardson there is briefly peeking to the inside of Burrito, but it's going to stay tucked in right behind him coming off turn number seven. Season four wide off of seven as Burnett briefly hits the wall, but coming to complete lap number one is Jordan Forbes, your pole sitter. Went in the way with Keisha Archon now looking at the inside of Carruthers for second, forcing the 20 car to the outside and opening the door for Mopar to be side by side with Carruthers. And Carruthers no match for Mopar on the inside of the lanes, can potentially fall down to fifth, maybe even lower, as Albert and Lips here now side by side with the 20. Continuing into turns two and four, looks like Carruthers will go down low and maintain fourth. Whoopsie, very nearly getting into Albert as those two are not going to be side by side. I mean, our random Jays up to six in the 53, our Nathan Stapleton in 98, who of course, as I mentioned, won the Golf Summer Series race here in the summer of 2022. It's currently seventh, and is one of the favorites to win here today. But back to Albert and Whoopsie, who are still side by side for fifth. You turn number five, and down this back straightaway, looks like Whoopsie have the advantage for now over the 84, as he's now going to be three out of random and stable. He's got a car around in the back straightaway. Turn that's the 06 at Madison Chase, off for turn number five. This will bring the caution out, but fortunately for Madison, she did not get any damage at all. Did a really good job of keeping that car off the wall. But regardless, this is going to be a massive setback for Madison as she came this race as probably the most consistent driver in the field, finishing us at the top five in both classics thus far. I mean, it looks like that time by was Jordan Flores who led with Geisha Irish in the second and the 46 of Mopar in third. But yeah, that did not take long at all for our first caution here in the 2024 Massachusetts Classic. And let's take a look at the instant replay to find out why. So all just started going into turn number five. We're at this point, Madison Chase on the outside was side by side with fellow Silver Alliance driver Roberto Crown in the 21. So Madison gets a run on the outside while Crown gets slowed down a little bit by the 45 of McTrain. But then it comes JLT in the middle trying to make it three wide, forcing Madison into the wall, spinning her out and into the grass. But again, Madison did a really, really good job there of keeping it off the wall and got very little damage, if any, from that. And we'll continue the rest of this race. Let's go on board with JLT here. Yeah, Joti had a run in the middle, so I had to take that opportunity, but there's not enough room, quite enough room there for three cars to go three wide off of five. Finally on board with Madison here. Yep, she got in the wall, and the contact there from Joti sent her around. And finally, here's one more angle of this spin. Now, of course, this wasn't a caution that collected multiple drivers. It sent multiple drivers into the garage, but it's still going to change the course of this race regardless. And we're already seeing that as every driver this time by is coming down pit road. Now, going into this race, if you remember, I mentioned the pit window on average was 8 to 10 laps. Now, it's based off past Papyrus races in both the Golf Summer Series as well as the first Massachusetts Classic in 2022. But this time around, it's going to be different here on lap number four. 
even though you can't do any adjustments to your car, you can still change tires and top off your gas. It looks like I see a mix of both two and four tires coming from these leaders. And as for race off Crip Road, Jordan Forrest has been won by a country mile, followed by Brandon Crowder, Jason Albert, Random J, and Nathan Stapleton. Brian Gross for the rest of the top five. Now some drivers, even up towards the front, like Keisha Richardson, Mopar, and Lipsy did four tires. So it looks like they're going to restart outside this top ten as the drivers who just took two tires for Leapfrog right ahead of them. Now one thing I failed to mention throughout the course of the tire race thus far is just how fast these cars are going. These Triple Winter Challenge cars are some of the fastest cars we have seen on this channel. And since we've raced at Papyrus three separate times with three separate cars, it's going to give us a visual illustration of just how fast these cars are. And there you see the three pole sitter times from the three Papyrus races. And you can see during the SRL for the 2022 race, uh, pole sitter posted a lap time of 1 minute 14 seconds. In the Golf Summer Series, the pole sitter posted a lap time of 1 minute and 11 seconds. And there you see the Triple Winner Challenge for this race. Uh, po the pole sitter posted a lap time of 1 minute and 9 seconds. These cars are no joke and go extremely, extremely fast. And I'm pretty sure the fans are absolutely loving just how fast these cars go. Now, as for a brief rundown of the rest of the top 10, Hodum's currently in 6th, followed by Jordan Stout in 7th, Nathan Ormond's in 8th, Arkeez Sharonshin, Mopar, and Brad Dureem are 9th, 10th, and 11th, respectively, and also some of the first drivers who took 4 tires as opposed to 2 tires. There we see Joe T in 15th, who last time we were here at Papyrus in the Golf Summer Series, had a nasty wreck right around this corner that took him out of the race. Meanwhile, as we go deeper in this field, you see the past two summer champions of Brendan Beal and Ryan Wilson, alongside the 59 of Caleb Rose, and the 1 of Alex Mullen. Other notable drivers towards the back of the field include Kellen Baker in the 28, the 21 of Roberto Crown, the 19 of Kyle Sustry, Jose Angel Gutierrez, Nick Sand, the 40, the 91 of Owen Miles, Madison Chase and Neil 6, and finally, Matthew Burnett and Alex Santavala, as both those two are 27th and 28th respectively. And just a reminder that these are the two only eligible drivers left for the reserve, as those are the only two drivers to win a classic so far this winter. Now, another thing to note, too, a lot of the drivers that I mentioned are towards the back half of the field are all part of the struggling Ruby Alliance. And going into this race, the Ruby Alliance had by far the lowest average finish out of the four alliances. And out of all the Ruby Alliance drivers so far here today, the highest one is by far Jordan Stone in the 11 car, which is mainly thanks to the aforementioned two-tire stop, allowing them to gain a lot of positions on track. But we're going to see if the fortunes of the Ruby Alliance will change here today. As here we go. Pace cars back down pit road. With the field solely coming towards the restart zone. We're back in the green here at the Massachusetts Classic. Once again, the inside gets a good jump into turn number one. As Patrick Miller is already making a three wide. Forcing Bradley to the middle. And Lipsy to the outside. Saw briefly as well, Alex Bowen was also going through wide towards the back of the pack, forcing Wilson to the middle and Rose to the outside. Continuing to turn soon, forks like Crudders are maintained second for now, with Random now side by side of Albert for third. And briefly right there, both Hodum and Jordan Stout were through out of Nathan Stapleton. Going into turn number five. Round goes Brendan Beal hard into the wall. As Ruby Alliance teammates and Kyle Sustry and Jose Angel also involved as we're already back under caution. And it looks like the struggles will continue for the struggling Ruby Alliance as two, potentially three of their drivers could be done for the day. And you saw there the heavy smoke coming out of Beal's car. He's all but done for the day. Potentially also the same could be said for the 19 of Kyle Sustry and maybe even the 25 of Jose Angel. Meanwhile, coming back to the front to complete lap number five with Jordan Forbes leading yet another lap with Brendan Crudders in second, Random J in third, the 84 Jason Albert in fourth, and Jordan Stout running off the rest of the top five. But anyways, let's take a look at the instant replay for a second and much bigger caution of the day so far. So Otto started going to turn three and four. Brendan Beal is almost right up against the wall in that 37, forced up to the outside. So going into three, Beal is just essentially stuck. Couldn't really go anywhere. Just continue to lose ground as Baker and Lipsy are make contact there. But there comes the 21 of Roberto Crown making contact with Beal, sitting right in front of Jose Angel and Kyle Sushar. Those two had absolutely nowhere to go. And as I mentioned, Beal took a really, really nasty hit. Almost head on into that wall. Thank God for the safer, bar safer barrier there. The hit was so bad, in fact, that the PSL champion is done for the day. 
Seiko does from up above in slow motion. So again, Beolish is stuck on the outside and almost nowhere to go. Almost hit the, almost hit the wall that time by. And there you see towards the rider screen, Lipsy coming down in front of Kel and Baker, almost sending those drivers around and wrecking. But then coming back to Brendan Beal, here comes a runner from the 21 Roberto Crown, trying to make it four wide off of four, but instead gets into the 37. And says I'm right in front of the 25 of Jose Angel Gutierrez and the 19 of Kyle. So let's try again. Those two had absolutely nowhere to go. Couldn't really do anything at all as Beal took, takes a nasty hit into that safer barrier wall. Let's go on board with Roberto Crown. Right there. Just barely even got into Beal, but it was still enough to spin him out. And speaking of which, let's go on board with your PSL champion. Again, crowd just barely, barely even got into him. That was all it takes. Hard hit there for the 37. Almost head on into the wall. And finally, on board of Kyle Sus try. And again, just absolutely nowhere to go. Once both Beal and Angel went around, it was game over for Sus try. But anyways, for the second time here today, we're under caution here in the Massachusetts Classic here at the Papyrus Motorsports Park. It is true, coming this May is the return of Paradise with the return of the Palm Summer League later this summer. More info will be coming soon for the 2024 season in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, here in the Massachusetts Classic for the final Triple Winner Challenge race, we're about to go back green after a major, major crash happened with PSL champion Brendan Beal, the 19 Kyler Sustry, and 25 Jose Angel. Beal and Sustry are done for the day. Angel is still out on track, albeit towards the back of the pack with heavy, heavy damage. You know, taking away some of the drivers towards the middle and back or half of the field. You see some notable drivers like Brad Dareem in 11th, or Ross McTrain in 15th, Ryan Wilson in 17th, Callan Baker behind him in 18th, or Nick Sands up the 19th in the 20, the 21 Roberto Crowns in 20th. He's been around both cautions we've had so far today. While Madison Chase, who spent out during our first caution, is currently in 22nd. While the Madhouse Classic winner, Alex and the and the M&M's Classic winner, Matt Frenet, continue to struggle as their chances of winning the challenge and claiming the PSL reserve continue to slip away. And I see Jose Angel is somehow still on the lead lap. And it's probably going to be very, very slow here once we, get back, once we get back rolling. But anyways, I just read the top three. The post setter of Jordan Forrest is basically dominated for most of the day. Followed by Brandon Crutter in the 20 and the 53 of Random J. But here we go. Once again, the pace car is coming back down Pitt Road. As the field approaches the restart zone, we're back on the green here at Papyrus. Definitely a less aggressive restart this time around as everyone continues to remain too wide going into turn number two. With Random all over the back number of four trying to move him up the track. And now three wide off for two with Random out in the middle before he and Forrest quickly move back down to the inside in front of Stout. Through turns three and four, both fours and random gonna move down the track in front of Crutters as he's back up to third. With Stout now in fifth, hold him side by side to Stapleton for six. Oh, we got a car around in the back of the field. That's Nathan Orban, the 95, into the inside wall. Looks like he may have gotten some contact from the 46 of Mopar as that 95 is a lot of ground through turn 6 and 7 with all these drivers trying to get around them. Death for a really tough rake for Orman as he restarted 7th before all of that happened. We're now coming to the halfway point of lap number 9 of Random trying to take the lead away from Forbes. But Forbes will quickly come to block into turn number 1 for strong runner from Albert as he's still side by side of Carruthers and looks like he'll clear Carruthers for 3rd going into turn number 2. And with that, that's going to cause Jordan Stout to be side by side of Carruthers as he'll clear for fourth in the turn number two. Potentially leaving the door open for Nathan Stapleton to potentially move up inside the top five. Now, speaking of Nathan, we do got a replay of what happened to Nathan Orman last time by. So, similar to the Madison Chase spin, this happened off turn number five of Orman moving up high and Mopar getting the run in the middle, but instead gets into the 95, sends him into the grass and into the wall causing significant left side damage to Orman's car. And then here he is coming back onto the track, losing a lot of spots. And definitely, again, a really tough break for Orman after he had a really solid day going for him. 
And, just, and that basically turned Orman from having a potentially top 10 day, now potentially a day below the top 20. But back to your top three with the race for the lead, continuing to heat up with fours, Random, and Albert all essentially nose to tail for one another, going into turn number seven. And now here comes Random looking to the inside alongside Albert as we're going to be three wide for the lead coming to lap number 10. Force got on the wall that time by to turn number one around Random J to be side by side for the lead now. And if Albert is out fast approaching on the inside, that's going to leave Force completely out to dry on the outside off of one Random J now in the lead of her Papyrus. You know, Stout that time by trying to make a three wide with Forbes and Albert, but instead he's going to move back down to the inside in front of Carruthers. But through turns three and four, it's all Random J as he continues to lead the way. Off of turn four, now into turn number five, Albert, despite both Random and Albert getting into the wall, Albert is able to do a really good job of closing that gap between him and Random. We'll see if he'll continue that momentum down this back straightaway. And let's see one card as Keyshawn Richardson looking wide on Nathan Stapleton, Patrick Miller, and Brad Ream closely following as well. And if you remember, those three drivers during their first pit stops earlier in this race all took four tires, while everyone else in front of them took two. And we're going to see if those extra two tires are going to make any difference here as if fast approach to end this race coming to lap number one with Albert now looking to the inside of Random. In the turn number one, Albert will clear Random for the lead with ease, where Forbes now side by side of the 53 in the turn number two. And once again, both Stout and Crudders are fast approaching on the inside as Random remains stuck on the outside. Returns three or four. Albert continues to pull away. Before it's back up to second and random and third for now. Now is a good time to mention that the official Triple Winner Challenge car set for 2023 to 2024 is now available to download. And the download link for said car set is now available in the description. And how about the 84 of Albert? As I mentioned, he has absolutely struggled in the Triple Winner Challenge thus far, as he was involved in wrecks at both the Madhouse Classic and M&M's Classic. But so far here today, he started up front and ran up front for basically the entire day. But now he's in the lead of one of the fastest cars on track, with a legitimate shot to win this race, coming to five laps to go. Here comes another strong run for Forbes in the one, but Albert comes down to the inside almost immediately to block. Last time by, the gap between Albert and Forrest was just over a tenth of a second, but the gap between Albert and Random is just under three tenths of a second. But down turns three and four once again, Albert, Forrest, and Random all elect to run in the middle lane, as opposed to moving down to the bottom of the racetrack. Meanwhile, as for Brandon Crudders and Jordan Stout, they're both trying to catch back up with the rest of the top three, alongside Keyshawn Richardson, who holds steadily in six. Here's a potential battle for seven with this Patrick Miller looking to the inside of Nathan Stapleton as he continues down the back story, but into turn six and seven, Miller's going to tuck him right back in behind to maintain to maintain his eighth position. You know, Brad Reams in nine for Alex Bowen in tenth. Rounds off the rest of the top ten as he makes his first appearance in the top ten running order today. And now we got some of our leaders coming on pit road. Albert, Forbes, Random, Stout, Carruthers are all in, as well as Reem, Hoodlum, Nick Sant, and Madison Chase. Also as well, Alberto crowned in the 21 and Nathan Orman in the 95, who of course got damaged back in lap number eight. Check the damage car for Angels coming down as well, but for now, here's your three car race for the lead with Nathan Stapleton, Keith Sean Richardson, and Patrick Miller. Other drivers also stay down include the one of Alex Mullen, the 9 of Joe T, the 46 of Mopar, the 45 of Ross McTrain, the 48 of Ryan Wilson, the 97 of Alexander Vella, and the 28 of Callan Baker. Now, if you recall back to our first uh, round of pit stops in lap number three under caution, a lot of these same drivers are staying out, took four tires, so the drivers, judges now coming out, took two tires. So we're going to see which strategy will prevail this, with this race now having less than four laps remaining. Random J appears to be the first car out of pit road with Jordan Stout hot on his heels. 
Looks like Jason Albert was the third car out, followed by Jordan Flores and Brady Carruthers. Madison Chase and Nick Sand aren't too far behind as well, while Brad DeReem and Hodum had very, very slow pit stops that time by. And once everybody else cycles out here, those two drivers who ran basically if inside the top 13 the entire day is possibly going to fall inside the top 15 and possibly even more positions. And now here comes that second group of drivers down pit road, led by Nathan Stapleton, Miller, and Richardson, and subsequently Liv Stapleton and Weenie's drivers down pit road, who will lead lap number 13, as you now come down to only three laps to go here at Papyrus. It looks like in the case of these group of drivers, everyone's going for two tires and topping off fuel. Some drivers are doing left sides, or others are just doing right sides. As we got drivers, so the further stall is already done. Alex Deval is done, as well as Alex Mullen, Owen Miles, Ryan Wilson, Stapleton. While Patrick Miller looks like he's going to lead this group back onto the track, followed by Mullen, then Wilson, Richardson, and Santa Valla. But now, as you saw there, it comes that first group of drivers fast approaching to turns one and two, led by Jordan Down Random. I'm going to see where these second group of drivers merge in correlation with the first group as it looks like in the turn number two. Stout will get around Mullen with ease, trying to chase down Miller off of two and down the hill. And even though this is a sizable gap between Miller and Stout, the 10 car is not quite up to full speed yet. Well, Stout's been up to full speed for quite some time now. There was a chance Stout off of turn number four here could catch up to that 10 car. Looks like he will. Down to straightaway and into turn number five. Miller hits the wall. Here comes down on the inside, side by side for the lead. Now it's like off of five and down the back straightaway. He's going to be joining Stout to the lead here at Papyrus. With Mullen now side by side with Miller for second. It looks like right now at the moment, as for caution comes out, it's going to be a five car race for the win with Stout, Mullen, Miller, Random, and Albert making up your top five. I mean, our Wilson's going to cycle to six with Richardson in seventh, Santa Val in eighth. But for now, it's going to be Jordan Stout with the lead. Coming down to two laps to go here for Papyrus, but Alex Bowen and Patrick Miller are right hot on his heels. Meanwhile, as for the drivers who really didn't get good cycles that time by, the 21 of Roberto Crown is currently with the last car on the lead lap. And it's actually being beaten by the 25 of Jose Angel, by the 88 of Hoodwell, the 45 of McTrain, and the 59 of Caleb Rose are some of the other notable drivers outside the top 20. Meanwhile, as for the pole sitter and the driver who's been up front for most of the day, Jordan Forbes, he's currently displayed in the 13th position after he had a really bad pit cycle. But anyways, as we go back to the leaders, do turns three and four for the second to last time. Jordan Stout still maintains his lead over Alex Mullen as last time by the gap between him and the one car, which is a little over a tenth of a second. But of course, that could quickly change as he approached turn number five. And as we're on board with Mullen, we're going to see if he gets a strong run off Stout here. It looks like the answer is a decent amount of ground gain down the back straightaway. I'm going to see if Mullen can keep up that momentum through turn 6 and 7 for the second to last time. With Miller and Random trying everything they can to catch back up. Off of 7. Here comes another strong run from Mullen coming down to the front and to the white flag. One lap to go here in the Mashews Classic. As it looks to the inside, it's downward side by side for the lead into turn number 1. And the one Mullen will clear Stout with ease for the lead, moving Stout down to second as here comes a strong gun for both Miller and Random into turn number two. And that move from Miller is going to force Stout to the outside as the former moves to second place as Stout now tries to hold on to third. Random change is Albert now fast approaching. Down the hill into turns three and four for the final time. It's all Alex Mullen as he has a significant gap over Patrick Miller, but it's still over half a lap remaining. But now off of four and going into turn number five, here comes an opportunity for not only Miller, but the rest of his top four to make up some ground on Mullen as second through fifth for all single file. Down the back story, Mullen continues to maintain his distance over Miller, but there's still two more fast corners left to go. Alex Mullen since 2021 has been a channel regular, but despite all that time, he has failed to win a race. However, that's all going to change now as we'll see the checkered flag and win the Massachusetts Classic here at Papyrus. Congratulations to Alex Mullen and the Ruby Alliance area winners here for the 2024 Massachusetts Classic. Definitely a huge shout out to the Ruby Alliance here today as both Jordan Stout and Mullen got very solid finishes inside the top three. Now, of course, with Mullen being the third different driver to win here in the Triple Owner Challenge, 
It means that no driver was successful at completing the challenge, with Alex and Devalu being the closest one of them all, finishing 7th here today, while Matthew Renette had a very mediocre day, finishing 17th. And as for Alex Mullen, this one today will mark by far his highest placing classic finish, as he finished 13th and 23rd during our last two classics. But anyways, for one last time this winter, let's take a look at the finishing results as well as the alliance averages after all three races. So here we go, Alex Mullen in the one car finishes first for the Ruby Alliance. And how about a big, big shout out to the Ruby Alliance here today. They've been by far the worst alliance out of the three during these past two classics. But today, they've really come to show up as four out of their seven drivers all finishes at the top ten here today at Papyrus. Meanwhile, Patrick Miller for the Gold Alliance comes up just short, finishing second. While Jordan Stout in the 11, one of the other Ruby Alliance drivers, finishes third. Random J fourth is going to be the highest finishing Diamond Alliance driver, while Jason Albert runs off the rest of the top five for the Gold Alliance. Meanwhile, Ryan Wilson, after running towards the middle of the pack for most of the day, will finish sixth, while Alexander Vallow, who was the closest out of the three drivers to complete the challenge, finishes seventh. Meanwhile, fellow Diamond Alliance driver Keyshawn Richardson finishes eighth. Nathan Stapleton, of course, won the Golf Summer Series race here back in the summer of 2022, finishes ninth, while Owen Miles, also for the Ruby Alliance, runs off the rest of the top ten. And now for the Alliance averages for today's race. And once again, the Diamond Alliance is on top of the board with an average finish of 12.29. While the Gold Alliance is in second with an, with an average finish of 14 flat. And there you see the Ruby Alliance with an average finish of 14.29 in third. And of course, as I mentioned, four of the drivers all finishes at the top 10. But as for the other three drivers of Kyle Sushchar, Jose Angel, and Brendan Beal, they were all involved in that second caution of the day that took out both Beal and Sushchar, with Angel being relegated towards the back of the pack. And finally, in fourth is a rather disappointing day for the Silver Alliance, as today they had a collective average finish of 17.43, by far the lowest out of the four alliances. And now for the Alliance Savages, after all three races here in the first ever Triple Winner Challenge. And as you can see, the Diamond Alliance had the highest average finish at all the Alliances in all three races, with an average finish of 13.10. We know the Golden Alliance isn't too far behind, with an average finish of 13.9. As for the Silver Alliance, they're going to finish third, with an average finish of 15 flat. And if you remember going into today's race, the Silver Alliance was actually had an average finish in the 13s, just like the Diamond and Gold Alliances, but after, again, a very disappointing day for the Silver Alliance today, to, for the Silver Alliance today, they'll be relegated to third for the Alliance averages this year. And finally, there you see the Ruby Alliance with by far the lowest average finish out of the four alliances with an average finish of 15.9. So even with Alex Mullen winning and three other Ruby Alliance drivers finishing us at the top 10, the other three drivers that were, that were involved in that second caution destroyed any potential chance of the, of the Ruby Alliance gaining ground on the other alliances. And that will do it for our first ever Triple Winner Challenge on the channel. I just want to say huge, huge thank you to everyone who has watched and supported these races this winter. This was obviously different from our traditional series and mini-series from years past. But hopefully you all still enjoyed this as much as our previous series videos. And speaking of a series, we will have a return to series racing later this May with the return of the Palm Summer League. And I'm hoping to share additional details for our second PSL season either later this month or early next month with signups either late next month or early March. March, so stay tuned for all of those. But once again, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everyone who has watched the Triple Winner Challenge this year. Hopefully this, this does come back later in the future. But for now, once again, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys later this summer.